This is insane. You get a sense of speed. Now, if Starship here. manages to make it all the way through re entry, we'll collect valuable data on Starship flying through the Earth's atmosphere at hypersonic speeds, meaning uh, Whoa, more than five, go. or at this point, Grid fins are more actuating. than five times I mean, the, the speed uh, the of sound. Flaps. Holy cow. Now we're watching these live views, uh, HD views by the looks of it, thanks to Starlink. Uh, you can see that the flaps there on the ship might be actuating. Um, oh my gosh. Certainly some incredible uh, visions of planet Earth behind Starship. It's looking more now, and more controlled. Uh, we've already validated Starship's ability to fly Maybe. Uh, and land at subsonic speeds. You might recall those suborbital flights from a few years ago, and we can see those flaps there. That looks better. That looks so like a good orientation. Data on aspects like heating and control while traveling way faster than we did before is going that to be doesn't... critical to eventually bringing starships back <laughs> from space for rapid reuse. So I mentioned those flaps. That's one of the things um, that that enables Starship to help control itself and 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 survive the heat of reentry. Which, like we said before, we're expecting that reentry to occur around T plus 49 minutes. Uh, so we're uh, pr getting pretty close here. And what you're seeing here, it looks like the vehicle is sort of moving back and forth. Part of what you're also seeing is one of the cameras, this onboard view that we have, is on the end of a flap. Starship has front flaps and and rear flaps in the vehicle. Um, so we've got four of those, and oh man, we can see the heating on those flaps is as we're starting to re-enter no the Earth's way. atmosphere. This is where the Earth's atmosphere is doing no the work to slow it way. down. Uh, now, like we said, this plasma field wow. is, wow, what a view. We hope to maintain these views. Oh my the God. Starship is so big that we're hoping that the plasma field doesn't entirely blanket the entire vehicle. Right now, it is not. The Starlinks are still. Views brought to you by Starlink. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Starlinks are still communicating and still <laughs> not uh, capturing this side. the data and the video that we see here. I mean, in their work. We talked about it earlier. Uh, up to 2,600 degrees Fahrenheit that those heat chill tiles are dissipating as we are re-entering. No yeah. Now this was one way. of the critical. Or, or rather the key uh, mission objectives that we were hoping to hit today for this Starship that. has ever flown. So this is the first time that we're getting to collect this re-entry data and understand how these 18,000 hexagonal heat shield tiles are working together to protect the belly of Starship as it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. This footage uh, is... Once again, the, the atmosphere is doing us a big favor oh, here by... The this atmosphere is... is actually doing us a huge favor here by acting as a braking system for Starship um, as it re-enters the atmosphere. And that's part of the reason why the flaps are so important. We're using the body of Starship and the drag from the atmosphere to slow us down from orbital speed, but you want the vehicle to remain stable. Uh, one of the benefits of today's trajectory, actually, we got closer to what the heating profile will be on just a normal mission. Uh, when you compare it to our previous flights, which were headed out to Hawaii. Um, so we go through peak heating and then we hit subsonic and then uh, Starship splashes down in the ocean. Again, we're not doing a landing burn on this flight uh, and we're not expecting Starship to survive the impact. We're not gonna be recovering any of the hardware.